uh, Honorable Minister Kuwai. I also would like to acknowledge uh, the presence of the United Nations Residential uh, Coordinator, Mr. Nelson Mufa, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, members of the faculty, esteemed guests, family, including my mother, Wode Ginamarada, who is here with us today, friends and graduates. I stand before you today to accept the honorary doctorate in engineering with profound humility and deep gratitude. As I reflect on this extraordinary honor, my thoughts return to Dutuni village, a small village here in South Africa where my journey began, not in a formal classroom or laboratory, but at the side of my grandmother, Bochiane Marwara, my father, Boshavani Marwara, a celebrated mathematics teacher, and my mother. My grandmother was an organic engineer and a master porter and a mat weaver. Though she never had formal schooling, she profoundly understood materials, precision, and design concepts that I would later learn when I was studying engineering. What fascinated me the most as a child was how she would gently knock her clay pots, listening to the sound to reveal whether the pots were strong or weak. Little did I know then that this simple act would ignite a, a lifelong passion to understand, to test, to innovate, and to solve problems that improve our lives around us. Later here at the University of Pretoria, and I'm sure Professor Skullcock can actually be a witness for this, Professor Stephen Haynes taught us that clay pot knocking is called vibration excitation and that using sound to assess the integrity of clay pots is known as non-destructive testing. I realized then that my grandmother's intuitive engineering lessons mirrored the scientific principles that I would later go on to study. In fact, my grandmother was my first really engineering teacher. She taught me material selection without algorithms, optimization without equations, and the art of cooling without needing to know the Boltzmann equation. When she tested the pots by the length of their rings, she unknowingly applied the principles of structural vibration that I would later encounter here at the University of Pretoria. As her hearing faded with age, leaving her unable to differentiate between good and bad clay pots, I saw, I saw how even the finest craftspeople inevitably meet their human limits a realization that shaped my understanding of why machine-enabled automation is so important, and one that stayed with me as I moved into the field of artificial intelligence. My grandmother was also my first business teacher. She sold pots, mats, and tobacco snuff. And when her snuff business stopped turning a profit, she closed it, teaching me about profit and loss, about when to persist and when to pivot, while noting the health risks of tobacco snuff and acknowledging the dangers of smoking. I later came to, to formalize in my business studies the very business principle that my grandmother had practiced 
instinctively. She was also a storyteller. In the Venda tradition, there is this concept of Ngano. Fairy tales woven into, into the wisdom of generation. She taught us about wisdom, mischief, morality, and resilience, traits that you are going to need as you go out into the world. I personally have drawn on these lessons in diplomacy, leadership, and teaching, sometimes using stories to explain even the most complex of technical ideas. Most of all, she instilled in us essential leadership values. The importance of education. Those who do not read must not lead, lest they are going to lead us into temptation and deliver us to poverty. The art of, the art of listening, the art of seizing opportunity, and in this regard, I am reminded of the great words of an American thinker who said, an opportunity of a lifetime must be taken within the lifetime of the opportunity. And as you go out there, you need to grab all the opportunities that come. She also taught us about being focused on the goal, using intuition, acting with humility, practicing patience, having the courage to change course, and being broad-minded. She often reminded me of the Chivenda saying, Wasa chimbira umara karazi. And what this means, if I were to approximate it into English, if you do not travel, you shall surely marry your own sister a vivid reminder of how travel and openness broaden our horizons. When I considered studying abroad at the tender age of 18, my father, mother, and my grandmother encouraged me, understanding how the world beyond Dutuni village could shape an individual. As a high school student, after winning the National Science Olympiad, uh, it was, to me, more than just a personal milestone. It opened a door to a world on the brink of profound transformation. Attending Science Week in Johannesburg at the age of 17, and the London International Youth Science Forum in England uh, a few weeks later, just before the fall of the Berlin Wall, was a formative experience. There I witnessed firsthand the unifying power of science to transcend borders, bridge divides, and touch lives across the globe. It revealed to me the profound interplay between science, society, and politics, and how science can serve as a powerful instrument in the delicate art of international diplomacy. I, of course, I then went to the United States and then came here uh, and, and later on went to the University of Cambridge. I must confess, and this confession, you can broadcast it as loud as possible. Of all the institutions that I have attended, the one that I consider the best is the University of Pretoria and you can give yourself a round of applause. And of course, I came here and did a master's under Professor Stefan Haynes, researching on finite element models to detect false in structures, work that in many ways echoed the quiet wisdom of my grandmother's hands. And of course, returning to South Africa, after completing a postdoc, I went to be a brewer of beer. And one time, after having brewed one of the famous beer labels that you probably know about, I had my own Damascus moment. 
Go and brew people, not beer. That was when I decided to tender my resignation to go to the University of the Witwatersrand as an academic. Of course, today, I serve as uh, the rector of the United Nations University and a UN Undersecretary General in Tokyo. I am privileged to guide the United Nations University in harnessing knowledge, innovation, and technology to address the world's most urgent challenges, from climate change and poverty to peace building and global health. I also need to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, uh, one of uh, the people who are working in my office in Tokyo, Simon Bota, who also graduated from this great university of Pretoria. So this honorary degree is not mine alone. It belongs to my wife, Dr. Jabulile Manana, a proud three-time graduate of the University of Pretoria. To our sons, Katuchero and Tendo, and our daughter, Denga. To my grandmother, Wachianeo. To my mother, Woregina, if you could stand up so that you can be seen. <laughs> to my late father, Woshabani Marwara and to my grandfather, Bo Petros Radububi Ramurongo, who spent his entire working life working at the University of Pretoria. It also belongs to my mentors, colleagues, students, and people of South Africa, whose resilience and spirit is inspire me daily. To the graduates here today, remember this. Your journey will not be a straight line. Mine passed through a brewery. There will be detours. There will be obstacles. There will be moments of doubt. But your greatest lessons lie within those twists and turns. Whether you come from a great city like Tokyo, which has 37 million people, or a small village like Dutuni with 6,000 people, you can change the world. As we say in Chivenda, this means a person is born not knowing how to live. They learn as they go. And in this era of artificial intelligence, the ability to learn and relearn is the currency that will take you very far. Let your life be a journey of learning, discovery, and service. The world is waiting for your light. Finally, and in the presence of the resident coordinator here, uh, Mr. Nelson uh, Mufu, I dedicate this award to the United Nations University and its remarkable global community, to the scholars, researchers, students, and staff working daily to harness knowledge for a more peaceful, just, and sustainable world. It is an honor to stand with you in the service of humanity. Vice Chancellor, I have known uh, your great vice chancellor for many, many years uh, as the chairman of the CSIR, I sincerely thank you uh, and the University of Pretoria. The leadership of University of Pretoria, the excellent faculty that, are, that is here in front of you, please give them a round of applause. Because it is all these people and your family members who are here with us who have made this graduation for all of us possible. I accept this honorary degree not as an end point, but as a tribute to the values of the United Nations. 
enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the UN Charter. And as a renewed commitment to continue learning, continue serving, and help build a world worthy of the dreams we all share. Ndoribuwa, Nyawonga, Enko Si Thank you.